Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Little by Little. If you've been following along, you'll know that the first five videos in this series have focused on building the house itself. But today I'm going to change gears a little bit and we're going to go inside the house and into the kitchen. Now this tiny little house never had a lot of modern conveniences. There was never any running water or indoor plumbing and there was never any kind of modern day heating system. There was certainly no furnace. So the only source of heat that the house had came from two places. One was a little pot belly stove in the living room and the other source was the wood burning stove in the kitchen. So today we're going to build the wood burning stove from the kitchen. I'm going to put a list below of all of the materials that I've used as well as the measurements and I invite you to follow along if you like. Let's talk first about the materials that we're going to use for this project. So I've got a couple of different types of material that I'm going to use um, based on their width. Um, so for the structure of the stove itself, I'm going to use something a little bit thicker. This is three thirty seconds of an inch or three millimeters for my metric friends. Um, the other uh, medium that I'm going to use, this is just chipboard. It is one thirty second of an inch in width or one millimeter in width or thickness, I should say. Um, you can use craft wood as well. When it's all put together and painted, you will never know whether you've got a piece of chipboard or a piece of wood under there. A couple other things that you'll need. You'll need something for your stove pipe. Now I just pulled these out of some empty shampoo and conditioner bottles that have the pump. Um, they're just shy of a half an inch in real time would make about a six inch pipe in real size. So um, I've got about eight inches worth of pipe here. Won't need it all, but um, I will need more than just one piece. So, um, and then I also have, I need something for the legs. So I'm sure you probably won't have these, but um, just as an example of what you can use for the stove legs. This is about a third of an inch high. It's got a nice flat top on here, which will make it easy to glue to. You know, if you could use um, beads, I have some really nice wooden beads that are about that size that you could use. You could cut some wood dowel. You could, if you're into uh, sculpting wood, you could make some fancy legs or you can make them out of foam board. I mean, you can use basically whatever you, whatever you like for that. Just a couple of last minute things. So you're going to need some handles for the warmer uh, drawers as well as the vent covers on the side. I'm going to use these little pull handles that I ordered from Little Bits and Pieces. Um, Julie Warren has a great little Etsy store and she sells all kinds of this stuff. So, um, And it's just shaped like a little bit of a, uh, like a little bit of a half moon. and you just glue them right on. Um, if you don't have any of those, that's okay. Um, I have used these little pill casings, so I think there was maybe gravel in there or something. So you can see that it just has a nice little bubble where the pill was. And if you cut that out and then cut it in half, you end up with a piece that looks like this, which can also be used as a handle. Or you could just use wood. Um, or a button or a little bead or whatever you like. Um, there also needs to be a handle on the oven door, which I don't have anything that's even remotely close to the shape of. So I've just gotten a little bit of polymer clay. This is a baking clay. You can buy it in almost any craft store. Um, I'm not great with polymer clay, but the handle doesn't look terribly complicated. So I'm just going to take a piece of this and roll it out and, and fashion my own handle for, um, for the oven door. A couple other things that come in handy. Um, I have a couple of different grades of sandpaper. 
And I also have some setup blocks um, to make sure that my uh, pieces are straight and at a 90 degree angle. Uh, if you don't have those, if you have one of these little um, 90 degree um, rulers that come in just a standard geometry set, those work really well too. You can use that um, or you can eyeball it, whichever you prefer. We're going to start with the main structure of the stove. So I've taken from my pile the back, the two sides, the bottom, and the front piece of the stove. Now for the wooden pieces, I've already gone ahead and given a light sanding to the pieces of wood, uh, just because they're a little bit rough. Um, I also want to round off the corners of the top of the back just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more of a, so it's not so boxy, because this stove is really boxy. <laughs> and so to do that, um, all you need to do is just take a piece of sandpaper and just kind of curl uh, the piece of wood towards you. And I would do it maybe five or six times and just slowly moving it back up. And then you'll see that there's now a little bit of a rounded edge to the top. And so I'll do that to the other side as well. There we go. Now you can see that they're just rounded a little bit. I don't need to do that to the other pieces. So we're gonna start with the bottom piece and I'm gonna attach the back on top of the bottom. So you'll see like so. So I'm just gonna use wood glue. Use my toothpick. I want to make sure that it's nice and flush against the back. And that's where these setup blocks are so nice because they're a nice heavy weight that you can push stuff back onto, plus they're perfectly square which I really need because I can't keep things square to save my soul. So I'm just going to put that there. And wood glue doesn't take very long to set up. So it'll probably in about 30 seconds or so, we'll be able to move on to the next step. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and attach the sides. So I have, again, it's going to sit on the inside of that shape like so again I'm going to use my block while that's just setting up I thought I'd tell you a little story about the stove so we have as a family no pictures of the inside of the house, not even one, at least not that we've been able to find. And so when we were talking about, you know, the different um, pieces of furniture and things that were in the house, everybody remembered that there was a wood stove in the kitchen. Um, but nobody could really remember, other than it, that it was black cast iron, nobody could really remember what it looked like. Like as far as, you know, like little details. And so um, while researching, I discovered that in my dad's hometown of Hodgeville, they have now a homesteader museum. And someone told us that my uncle Alec, um, who was the one who um, helped run the farm after my grandpa died, um, that he was one of the main contributors to that museum and actually helped set the museum up um, back in, you know, that late 80s, early 90s. And so I thought, wow, 
there's probably lots of really cool things in this museum that maybe were from inside of the house, which made me so excited. Um, so excited, in fact, that we went on a little road trip in May and I wanted to go out to the museum. And one of the things that I was hoping to find in the museum was this wood stove. Um, there's a couple other pieces, like there's a there's a trundle bed that we'll make a little later that's incredibly cool. And I was really hoping that that would be in there as well. Anyway, long story short, neither the wood stove nor this trundle bed were in the museum. So since we were so close, we decided on our way back to stop at the farm as well and go for a little walk. And we knew that really there was only one building on the property and I didn't even really know what it was. I had just kind of Google Earthed it and I could see that there was something there, but I didn't know if it was one of the original buildings or maybe the new owner had put a building up. Um, so anyway, we went to the farm and the building that's still standing is what's left of the barn, which is not in great shape. I'm actually surprised it's still standing. Um, the wind was howling at like, <laughs> It was blowing so hard we couldn't hear each other talk, um, but it didn't, uh, and it's a windy spot. So it must have been built really well because it's still standing, or what's left of it. Um, but anyway, up off in the distance, like this little hill where back in the day, they used to haul junk out to, um, as far as like old machinery, base, basically metal pieces. Um, and they would just haul them out there and it would kind of be like the junkyard for the farm. And we could see up on this hill that the old thrasher machine was up there. And so we thought, ah, oh, let's go for a walk and see what's up there. Anyway, as I'm walking, um, looking at all this old rusty old metal, I look down and what did I find but the wood stove. I'm going to put a picture up so that you can see. Um, what it looked like. I like did this dance of joy up on the top of the hill. Um, I'm jumping up and down like a mad fool. And I was losing my mind a little bit. It was pretty exciting. So anyway, I was so excited. Um, I, it just like made the whole day finding that stove. And because I was able to find the stove, I obviously now have a really clear picture of what the stove would have looked like back in the 60s, and that's the stove that I'm trying to replicate today. So there's my fun fact story. There's one more piece in your cutting instructions under the smaller width, the 1 32nd of an inch list um, called separator, um, which we also need to put in as well. So what this separator does is it separates um, the spot where the wood would have been put into the stove from the actual oven itself. And so I'm just going to put that in one inch over from the left. Now my um, setup blocks are exactly an inch, so I'm just going to use that as a guide. Um, if you don't have the blocks, of course, you'll have to measure. So we're just going to put glue on there. And again, we're only gluing two sides one top or bottom, my apologies, and one side. I'm sure you noticed that that little piece was made out of wood. Um, and that's because I had already cut that piece before I decided to flip over to using uh, the chipboard. So I didn't want to waste it. So that is the only piece in this um, project that is the 1 32nd of an inch that's in wood rather than in the chipboard. You'll notice for the top pieces that I have two pieces cut. One in the 3 32nd um, of an inch and one in the 1 32nd of an inch. The um, thicker one you can just put aside for now. In the, on the thicker one, we're going to do a little bit of cutting and embossing to make it look like these pieces or give the illusion that these pieces actually come out. And so I've, I've marked again below um, where you'll measure off 
on this top piece and it's starting from the left and you'll you'll do a measurement at one and an eighth of an inch one and a quarter of an inch two and an eighth of an inch three inches four inches and then you'll have about an eighth of an inch at the end um, this is also going to be cut for the stovepipe and you can see where I've drawn the circle there and I'm going to cut that out so that our um, piece of tubing will fit in there as well. Okay, so I did some trimming and now it fits in there nice and snug and it really only needs to go the width of the board um, because it's just the illusion that it goes into the oven. Um, and when it's painted black, you won't be able to see that it doesn't go any farther than the width of that paper. So the reason that I made two pieces for this, um, first of all, I, I think when you look at the pictures of the stoves from that era, um, oftentimes the top piece did look a little thicker than the rest of the stove and I wanted to continue with that illusion um, but I also knew that I wasn't going to be able to cut that hole into this um, thicker wood either because the wood is just simply too hard so um, by doing it in two pieces and then joining them together I'm going to still get the effect of the thicker top and I will have a place to put in my stove and before I put those together, I actually just want to trace that hole onto the pieces of the warmer that sits up in the top, that'll sit up, sit up here, because I want to make sure that it goes through um, relatively straight. Now, this is going to overhang on the edge just a touch, so I'm going to make sure that I give it that little tiny bit. And then I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm going to draw a circle on the inside. And then once I've cut that out, I'll draw that same circle um, on the other side of the warmer so that it's all straight and all lines up for me. So let's go ahead and put these two together. And I have these lovely little tiny clamps that I picked up at the dollar store as well. And I'm just going to clamp that all the way around so that it doesn't warp on me. These are great. You get about eight in a package for like a dollar fifty or something like that, dollar twenty-five. And we'll just let that dry. I'm going to go ahead and attach now the top to the stove and as I said I'm going to leave a slight overhang on the left hand side. It's probably I would say probably even a little bit less than an eighth of an inch on that side and then you'll also see that there's an overhang on this side and I would assume that that was for you know, if you needed to take a pot or a pan off of the heat, um, you had a place to set it aside. Um, it's also a great place uh, to put the bucket of drinking water, which is where that sat in my grandma's house. And so I'll just put my glue on these four pieces as well as the back of the stove top. And then I think I'm going to put a little bit of masking tape over that as well 
um, just to make sure that it stays down nice and tight while it dries. So while that top is drying, um, I pulled out the oven doors. Now there's actually three pieces of oven door. Um, one we're not going to do anything with. The other two pieces, you can see that I've drawn this little design on them. Um, where I've just basically gone around about an eighth of an inch all the way around the outside and then about uh, three eighths of an inch maybe little um, sections that come out from the middle of each of those sides. I'm going to cut out this space in here leaving the border and these four areas that come out and I'm going to do that on both of these pieces. Okay, so those are all cut out. Now I am going to take on one of the pieces, I'll put this one aside. On this piece, I'm going to cut off this one little um, post here. And you'll see why when I get to the point of putting it on the actual stove. Won't make any sense to you right now, but I promise you it will when we're done. I'm going to glue these in place now. So I'm going to take the piece where I've cut out the notch and I'm going to put it on the solid piece first. Then I'm going to add the piece that has still has all four posts on top of that. I'm also going to paint this little section in here as well because it's just easier to do that before I put this section on top. Try not to leave too much dampness there. So if you've got some that still looks really wet and a little bit goopy, let's spread that out a little bit so that it dries a little faster. There we go. Let me just glue this second piece on. Just go ahead and clamp that. And let that dry. I'm going to take this tiny little medallion. I wasn't originally going to paint it, but I feel like it's going to get lost in there and you're not going to be able to see it if I don't. So I'm just going to use a very medium pewter color and I'm just going to paint that paper just so that it stands out. You can still see the texture in it even with the paint. I'm going to go ahead and glue it in the center there before we get any farther. Probably should have glued that in there before I put those on. Just gonna use so that'll be the oven door. Of course it'll be painted as well. I want to show you now why I left that little gap in the door. So this oven door was attached only by two little hinges on either side or either corner at the bottom of the door. Those hinges were just round like pins almost 
and it didn't stop the oven door from stopping at, at 90 degrees. It would actually fall all the way over to the to the bottom. And so what there was was this little piece of metal and I've just kind of bent it a little bit into like a um, just a tiny bit of a curve. And so what this thing would do is it sat underneath this piece and then this piece and it's too long right now but I didn't want to cut it too short this piece would actually attach on a hinge to the bottom underneath and it had this little ridge that went right about here that would only allow this piece of bar to go so far underneath that that little piece and so when you opened it it would go to the point where it hit that ridge like that and that's as far as it would go. And then you would close it and it would lay, lay in a curve again. So that's what I'm trying to recreate. I'll show you a picture again of the stove so you can see what I mean about that little bar. I want to install now the warmer that was up um, high on the back of the stove. And so I have so these little pieces, they're marked on your measurement sheet as um, side braces. And I've given you a measurement of um, one inch by two inches. Um, you'll have to then shape them so that they look kind of like that. Um, you can, if you wish, just leave them straight. But I kind of wanted a little bit more of an I'm not going to say ornate because that's too fancy of a word, but I did want a little bit of a shape to them rather than just a straight bar. So I've cut two like that. And they're going to go on either side here. And we're going to have the, sorry, the small side down. And we're going to install those on either side of the back of the stove. So I'm just going to glue the small side and the back side for now. And we'll install that right here. I'm just going to lay it on its back. I'm going to use my blocks again just so I can keep them straight, like so. You'll see that it is in just a little bit on this side because of that overlap. I do want to get rid of that excess glue there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the other side as well. You can see how they're attached on there. So that warmer then is going to sit on top of there. Okay, so I'm going to try and install now my stove pipe so that it attaches to the bottom of the warmer. Um, so I've just cut off about two and a half inches of this tube and I'm going to put it down into that hole that I created at the top of the stove. And then the top of it is going to go through the bottom of the warmer. Also wanted to mention, um, I did take some sandpaper and rough up this piece of plastic a little bit, just so that the paint will adhere to it a little bit better. So now we're going to take the bottom piece of the warmer, and God willing, that'll slide over without breaking off the bottom. Oh, there we go. So I will lift that up, put a little bit of glue underneath um, so that this stays put. So I'll go ahead and glue that in place. I'm also going to run a bead of glue 
around the inside here so that the stove does so that the pipe doesn't move. There we go. Not gonna lie, that was a little tricky. <laughs> Trying to force it through the hole and keep it straight and not bend it. Took a little bit of finagling, but that's okay. So next we're going to put the two side pieces. So these will go on the side like that, on either side, like so. And then we're going to put the top on. Now for the top, I'm going to put another piece of the pipe in. Um, I'm not going to cut it off just yet. I want to try it in the house and see how much room I have from this piece to the ceiling. Because ultimately this is going to go into the ceiling so that it looks like it's going to go through the roof and out. Okay. I cut off about four inches for the top pipe. That's not exactly how long it needs to be, but until I get it in, installed, and uh, start working on the ceiling, um, rather have it a little bit too long than have it a little bit too short. So we're going to glue that top piece on like that, and then I have a front piece that will go over the front of it. is to pull that nice and tight. Once you get it around the corner, it'll stay. We're getting close to the end, folks. All right, I have, I'm gonna put on all of the pieces on the front of the stove. So we have this secondary little warmer. It's like a warming tray that you would find in a range today um, that was at the bottom of this stove. I have my oven door which will go up here this will attach down here and then i also have these two little vent covers because when you're using a wood burning stove at some point you've got to clean the ash out right and so that's what these were these opened up you had a little scoop shovel you could scoop out all of the dead ash and then carry on so that's going to go on the front of the of the stove and then I also have there this was a warmer as well and so I'm going to put two little uh, fake doors up here for this warmer um, which are not going to open and they'll sit kind of like this. So this is just a little support. I know it folded up or folded out from there. I'm just going to put it in like so. So let's get started putting these on. Okay, and that's, that's all the pieces for now, at least until the painting is done.
Okay, here's our finished project. I did do two coats of the matte black, and then I also went over with one coat of the matte podge as well, just for protection. Um, the only thing that I'm gonna change out now that it's all together is, I'm not crazy about these silver pull handles. Um, now that they're on there, um, I don't like the fact that they don't match the legs on the on the stove. So I do have some bronze pull handles on order, and as soon as I get them, I'm going to change those out. Um, the other thing is I did have to go over and uh, redefine these lines. I was pretty sure I was going to have to. The paint really did fill them in and you couldn't really see. Um, so I just went over that with my embossing tool just to uh, redefine those lines so that you could um, see the different sections of the top of the stove. So <clears throat> that's our stove. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, always interested in hearing your comments as well. Um, if you have any uh, suggestions or tips and tricks or anything like that, I'm always happy to hear them. Um, or just let me know how you like the video. But until the next time, we're going to leave it at that. And uh, happy crafting.